Hello and welcome to the third edition of Linux How To's. This week we will be discussing how you can anonymize your internet traffic using Tor and Privoxy. Now two things that the internet was never designed for were anonymity and security. So the developers of Tor had to really jump through some hoops to get this to work and it's really quite neat. Now when you access a web page over the regular internet such as Google, your information is sent directly to Google through the internet on an unsecured public connection. Now what this means is that anyone who can listen to any point along the network has unfettered access to what data you are sending and receiving. Now after you query Google, Google knows all sorts of things about you. They instantly know your IP address and your search terms. Now if you happen to have cookies enabled in a, your browser, uh, Google can associate that information with every search you have ever requested since that cookie was activated. Now, if you are logged onto your Gmail account while you are searching, then Google can then associate all that information with your email address and every email you have ever sent or received. Now, at this point, Google certainly knows your full name, and if you have a MySpace or a Facebook page, then Google knows all sorts of things about you. They know your favorite band, your favorite cheese, and what basically this means is, especially if you have these other services enabled, uh, sending a request to Google can pretty much tell them everything that there is to know about you. Now, why is this a problem? Well, it isn't necessarily. However, there are certain circumstances where uh, this is not desirable and you need anonymous internet access. So who needs to use Tor and why? Many people wrongly assume that this is something that only criminals with something to hide will ever need. After all, if you have nothing to hide, why be anonymous? Well, here are some examples. Suppose that you are searching for Google to uh, get out of credit card debt. Now this is probably not information that you want stored on Google servers. Or suppose that you are the victim of rape or abuse and you're the member of an online support group. Uh, clearly, if you're in this situation, you wouldn't necessarily want your identity made public. Or suppose that you are an informant to a group of organized crime. In this case, keeping yourself anonymous is all that is keeping you safe from retribution from the criminals. Uh, Tor can also be used to evade censorship. For instance, if you are behind the Great Firewall of China, you can use Tor to view the millions of web pages that Google has willingly blocked at the request of the Chinese government. And anonymity is also very important for political dissidents in oppressive regimes uh, in cases where speaking out against the government can mean jail time or worse. Now, in case you are thinking that this sort of thing never happens, uh, consider this case study from back in 2003. Uh, Yahoo Incorporated has provided Chinese authorities with information used to jail one of its users for eight years. Yahoo's Hong Kong unit provided information about Lai Ji, a man from southwestern China, who was sentenced to prison in 2003 for subversion after posting comments online criticizing official corruption. Well, now that we have seen some uses for Tor, let's take a look at how it works. Now, suppose you want to query Google over an anonymous connection. When using Tor, the information leaving your computer is wrapped in several layers of encryption, often three layers like the diagram on the lower left of this screen shows. The encrypted data is sent to a random Tor node. This Tor node knows who you are, but it does not know what internet service you are requesting or what data you are sending to it. This node only knows how to strip off the first layer of encryption, which it does, and sends the remaining data to a second Torn node. Now this Torn node knows nothing other than that the encrypted data originated from node 1, so at this point you have achieved anonymity. This node only knows how to strip off the second layer of encryption, which it does, and sends the remainder to the third Torn node. This node knows nothing about the source of the data other than it originated from node 2. It knows how to decrypt the last layer of encryption so it can see the data you sent and where you want to send it, then sends the unencrypted data directly to Google. Google thinks the data came from node 3, and so Google doesn't know anything about you other than what you specifically chose to send to it. Now this is one extremely important thing to realize about Tor. If you send Google or any other website any personally identifiable information at all, including email addresses or passwords, your name, your address, your bank or your bank passwords, 
or anything else about you, then using Tor is even less private and less secure than the regular internet, because not only does the destination website, but also the third Tor node has direct access to the data you sent. So the bottom line is do not send any plain text personal data over Tor whatsoever.